This is Carl Ott, 2024 competitor in the uh, Robo Columbus competition, and uh, with his uh, duct robot, tape and bailing wire. Ro yes, this this is built on an ancient RC platform, so known to be known. Well used and abused 30 years ago that I inherited from Dave Anderson's son. Yeah, so this so, uh, is really cool. So let's talk about some of the features. All right. Uh, what this all, has and why it's not going to run. So you want me to talk about it or you want to talk about it? Go ahead. I'll yeah. talk about it. Okay. So so we have on here an Arduino Mega buried in this side there. Okay. And this is an Open MV H7 with NeoPixels and buzzers. And this is a PS2 controller. Then we have a Hobbywing 1080p speed controller. And then this is a, a power supply that I use for the OpenMV cam and the stuff on top. So um, it's not gonna run today because um, I burned out the servo for the steering the other day. And when I replaced it, I must not have done the steering right. And there's this linkage from the rear wheels to the front wheels. So you can see that it kind of gets hung up it works well enough in reverse, but there's something that gets hung up and draws too many amps. So it's no luck today to run it, but it works well enough on pavement. There's video to prove it. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> what happens is that um, we've got the serial port from OpenMV down to the Mega. Yeah. So if I start the, uh, let's say I start the, uh, I mean, let's say I start the Robo Columbus mode in um, no motors, only the servo, I think. So um, what this means is that now, uh, normally, oh, it's got an IMU, a BNO 0855. So normally in this mode, there's no cone detected from the OpenMV. The PID loop is on, the uh, IMU is, yeah, let's start off again. So the IMU is not calibrated at the moment, but so what, it still seems to run. This is north, you can see the white light is north. And you can see that uh, as, I, as I rotate the robot away from when I started it, the steering servo tries to keep it going forward. Mm -hmm. So the way the algorithm works is that... <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Well, no, no, I, I need it for this video. So, uh, but in just a minute. So the way the algorithm works is that when you start Robo Columbus mode, it just goes forward and it just keeps going forward until it sees the cone. And it tries to go forward by using the IMU compass mode to go straight. Now, as soon as it sees a cone, which it's not detecting that, but there's a cone down here. I'm learning a lot just being here. Then the, um, so we'll start that over again. So, hi doggy. Hi doggy. So, um, so let's say we, uh, we, we aim it in this direction. So now it's going to try and keep the servos aimed towards the original heading until it sees a cone. Then as soon as it sees a cone, as soon as it sees the cone, then it's supposed to have the wheels steer towards the cone. And then once it gets close enough to the cone, you get the high pitch thing and it does the reverse turnaround to head back to the other cone. Okay, so does it, there's no bumper, so there's... No bumper. It works by, it detects a cone, and if you see here, I'll show you. Um, it detects a cone by virtue of the um, right colors and the aspect ratio. So it wants the, the orangish colored box to be one and a half times higher than it is wide. And then it detects the presence of a cone whenever the width of the bounding box is greater than 370. So it's detected the, that you hit the cone. So it's got the cone in sight. Cone is in sight. That's a cone hit. So it stops a little short, but it works well enough on concrete. But the trouble is, like I say, the forward mode right now, there's, a, there's an issue with the drivetrain because of the stupid platform, so but I will not run this again. It's not worth it. I'm going to just go straight next time to a proper platform that's well-made and modern and maintainable. Yeah, so, but 
but the algorithm, the software, everything else is written. The algorithm is working well uh, in the last week. Uh, well, since last year, I've noticed that there's some serial port. Um, it, it was the uh, serial port was susceptible to single bit errors mm -hmm. when I last ran this two years ago. So I refactored that to now a bunch of bits have to be wrong for it to false trigger. Um, and then I and then also the issue was that I used the soft servo, the Arduino soft servo library, and that had interrupt conflicts, so it was just really screwing up serial transfers, and I've got, I got yeah. bad data. Well, for what it's worth. Uh... So now what I've done is I've replaced uh, that soft, I've done two things. I've replaced the soft servo library with a PWM library, so it uses hardware timing now, uh, and it doesn't have the interrupt inter interference. And the other thing I did was that even now, um, the asynchronous nature, so this spits out across the serial port as fast as it can, but I run a 20 millisecond interrupt loop, everything's timed on a 20 millisecond loop. And as best as I can tell, that transfer is getting stomped on, so about 0.2% of the time, I get bad packets down to the, and when that happens now, um, what I do is I, uh, if I get a, if I had a cone detected, but I get a bad packet, then I use the sample from the prior period, and then the next packet's good as good as good, good as rain again, good as rain. Okay, let me ask you this. Okay, uh, your your transfer speed is a. 11, 5, 200. The what? Uh, 1, 1, 5, 200. Is that what your serial port? Uh, yeah, that, that port runs at uh, 115, 200. Yeah. So I'm curious, uh, why not, you know, how big is your packet, just for curiosity? How many characters? I send uh, two integers, so oh, no big deal. 16, okay. 16 okay. bytes total. Okay, okay. And it used to be, was, originally, three years ago, this was 9600 baud. But that that was blocking code for so much time yeah. that we we sped it up. Yeah, that's what I was wondering if you kick up your serial port if you could. Yeah, and uh, all that does is minimize the chance okay. of, of hitting it. Okay, now we got to ask the questions. What's up? You got blue, white, and red. What is you said? Red was north. No. No, no. White well, is north. White is compass north. Right. And the blue is the front of the robot. The red is the back of the robot. And those colors are just left over because the code driving this was from a hover sim, which uh, the orientation of the robot could change um, okay. with respect to the platform. <laughs> okay. And the so world. there's no heading light ever comes on. The or closest, the, the closest to target the, heading. This 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 shows that, that right now, the the blue is between the two yellows. So this is straightforward compared to when we started Robo Columbus. Okay. That means it needs to steer to the left, and you can see the servos. Yeah, I like that it. That means it needs to steer this to the is, right. This is cool. I, yeah, I like the way yeah. you did that. Which what are great. these over here? Oh, that's the calibration. This one says the PID loop is on, so the heading PID is off right now. And as soon as I start the... As soon as I start the uh, Robo Columbus mode, it turns on the PID light and it turns on, it closes the heading loop around uh, compass. Okay. Until it sees a cone detection. When it sees a cone detection, you can see that this light comes on when it detects a cone. And normally, uh, it's disabled now in this mode, I guess, but normally it would, uh, it would steer towards the cone. Okay. So, but does this still work when you're in the cone mode? Yeah, but th this is bound to the IMU. Uh, uh, okay, so it's not, it's, it's it doesn't not switch over to the Switching cone. over to the, just because I didn't wire it that way. Got it. Okay. And then these other three relate to the BNO 855. So they, they are the overall system calibration and then the accelerometer and the gyro cal. Got it. Which, it just don't calibrate very often, but. Okay. Well, Carl, you know, a lot of good I, ideas in here. You know, it really is. I would have loved to see it run. So, well, I got to thank Steve because uh, when his first uh, mechanic blew out, uh, I blew a fuse in the grass, and uh, and Steve uh, let me replace uh, my original inline fuse, which nobody had a spare for, with with this guy. Okay. And then the uh, the drive mechanism in there that is perpetually bad. Yeah. Um, the paper clip I had broke, it wore out, and uh, you know those dog bones are like two dollars a piece, right? 
Yeah. I just want to. I just want you. Yeah, yeah. To, uh, and if you have one, I'd pay five. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so anyhow. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just saying, Amazon, you know, is your friend on things like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. All Next right. time, proper platform. Last time for duct tape and bailing wire. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Carl. Yeah. Great interview. Thank you.